Hi everyone, Taya here from Quilting Delights and we are here today to uh, do another machine quilting revival MQR project. These are so fabulous and I am very excited to be able to bring these to you. We are working on the geckos today. Although we've changed this, it was geckos on the move, now it's critters on the move because we have um, partnered up with Cantic Batiks and they do laser cuts of all kinds of uh, critters and starfish and hummingbirds, dragonflies, so you can do any kind of laser cut on your project that you want to. Now, Chris in our store was so excited about this that she took this home. Her son loves geckos. She took the project home, the pattern, and traced it off, and she did it as one big long table runner and then used our facing technique, which I'm going to tell you about in the second video, to finish this off. It's absolutely stunning. A couple of things that she said she would do differently. First thing that she would do differently on this one is that she would not use variegated thread. She uh, used a variegated thread, but what happens is it pops your eye right to that darker spot of the variegated thread in every single section. So um, note to self, if you're going to do this, you can use two tones of thread, but I would not use two, I would not use variegated thread. So you can either do it as a, a single uh, piece all together or I'm working on mine and I'm using the Bernina Stitch Regulator compatible ruler work attachments that we invented, that I invented, and it is making this project absolutely, absolutely divine when I have to do any ruler work at all. So keep that in mind, that's a tool that you want. Now let's talk about prepping your fabrics for a second. There's several ways to do this and on Pillow Talk, which is one of the projects that we have going, and on this one, I have backed my cotton fabric after I prepped it with um, uh, Mary Ellen's Best Press to get it stiff and to get it pre-shrunk. I backed it with what's called Shape Flex. It's Pellon's Shape Flex. It's a uh, woven fusible, uh, lightweight woven fusible that you put on the back of the fabric and it just really, really stabilizes it so that your stitches look beautiful, but it still allows the loft to come up when you are done. Um, I would suggest that I wanted to try this and see how it worked um, without the appliques on first. And I will tell you that you're going to want to stitch your appliques down before you do your quilting because my fear now is, um, so on Chris's over here, she stitched hers down first and then um, quilted right up to it. So that's how I would suggest you do it. You would put your uh, geckos down with an iron and then if you're going to use friction pens you're going to want to put your geckos down first then trace everything off and then do your quilting. Now I've got mine done. I've got mine traced off but I'm going to have to put my starfish on after I'm done. And you want to notice that I did mine in two sections because I'm going to do this as a wall hanging and I love the idea that it's going to be split. So that makes it kind of fun when we do the facing um, on in the next video, you'll see what that looks like. Okay, this project um, is going to get prepped with Mary Ellen's Best Press, and then we're going to put Fusible on the back, and then I used an 80% cotton, 20% polyester batting, and then I sprayed the back of my project, I spray basted it to the batting, so it was nice and tight and tidy when I got started. Okay, I attached my stitch regulator, and I attached the uh, quarter inch foot, uh, the quarter inch uh, compatible attachment for ruler work. Um, the only ruler work I did on this particular project was on the outside edges. I ruler worked those two lines, and then everything else is free motion. But you want to remember that free motion is not a scary thing, and it's only the first stitch that's painful. Once you get past the first stitch, it's really, really simple. So I like to, uh, because this is a project that you're actually going to see the back, I start with all of, my, all of my stitches. I start with my threads on the top. I have four threads here, two from where I started, two from where I stopped. And I'm going to tie those off and sew them into the project, just like you would if you were doing a traditional quilt. But I like to have those hidden because I don't want anyone looking at anything except for the quilting and the stitches. I don't want them to see knots or anything like that. So I've gone ahead and it's very rhythmic doing this wave quilting, especially when you have a template 
uh, you've drawn it and you can just focus on um, smoothing out your quilting and getting those done. The serpentine that goes back and forth is really fun. And I want to make sure you all know and can see, just like on Pillow Talk, uh, or I'm sorry, between the lines, um, there was a crosshatch section where I didn't quite meet the lines that uh, I had drawn. But the thing you want to remember is the minute you hit this with an iron, those drawn lines are going to go away and all you're going to see is the quilting and it's going to look beautiful. So I, I just worked on and practiced the um, movement and the motion. Now, one thing that um, I will absolutely tell you makes a huge difference is having our Easy Glide pressing sheets underneath the project. So you can see right now it's okay, but it's not as good as it's going to be when I put this on here. Oh, there's another little starfish. I have three of them. I have two. I have a small and a medium. And then I have a large. And so they're going to go on here when I'm done. I love the colors. And Sarah from our store here loved the idea of doing the green fabric. And I'm just going to line that up so that it matches my stitch regulator. And put this down. And then all of a sudden, voila. It is slick, slick, slick. And it makes it so much easier to do the turns. Now I want to talk about a couple things, um, uh, especially doing circles with the stitch regulator. Um, one of the things that I discovered, and I'm going to call it, we're going to start calling this pivot quilting. We're going to start calling it pivot quilting. You're going to hear that term a lot from me because I really have mastered how to do um, pivot quilting when I have a project that I just need to um, do circles like this. So when I say pivot, what I'm talking about is this needle, um, normally we're pushing the fabrics through, but when you're doing this kind of quilting, you, you're using this needle as a um, pivot for turning your fabrics. So we are not turning the fabric, we are not turning the fabric, we are moving the fabric on that on that point. So let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to do needle up, needle down. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to do that again. Needle up, needle down. And I'm going to pull that thread up. My bottom thread's a little short. So now my threads are underneath and I'm just, I'm, I'm focused on this needle being the place that I'm going to turn and pivot my fabric. So let me just start this. And I'm going to pull this out. I'm doing it in black thread because I want to show you what it, what I'm talking about for the process. Okay. So there we go. And then I'm going to pull my threads up and you can see, um, let me do another one. And these are just practice. I've already stitched this out, so I'm um, just showing you um, how important it is to have this be the center focus of where you are quilting. We're moving the fabric underneath that needle. Now, just as a reminder, when I quilt, I uh, and I'm using the BSR, I have my foot pedal unplugged. I am not using my foot pedal. I want all of my control to be right here where I can see it. Before I knew that I could quilt with the stitch regulator without the foot pedal, I would accidentally tap it, and I can't tell you the number of needles that I broke. Um, and I actually put a hole in my quilt one time, so it was that that prompted me to learn how to do this without the foot pedal. Okay, here we go. So we're just going to carefully and slowly. Remember, you do not have to go fast. When that needle is moving, it will go exactly as fast as you do. The psychology of it, though, is, oh my gosh, the needle's going faster than I can, and you end up chasing it, and we don't want to chase it. All right, I'm going to cut my thread. So I want you to notice the difference here. The first one, I was going really fast, and I couldn't, I did not do a good job anticipating, but the second one, when I just slowed down and breathed, look how perfect that circle is. So that's what I want you to focus on. Same thing with um, doing these wave lines. So I'll just start over here on the left hand side and pull my thread up 
and then we're going to just start it. And don't forget to breathe. So we're going to go up and over, and then down, and up and over. And what will happen is you will start developing a rhythm, and the end curves will look better than the beginning curves. So the other thing that might be helpful for you, and I always have one around, is you might want to trace off a section of each of these designs onto some scrap muslin or scrap fabric. And as you get ready to do another technique, then you can practice on your muslin piece before you come over here. That'll create some muscle memory so that when you actually get to this, you're ready to go. So let me just cut the thread on this and I'll show you how, um, how good this looks. So it's very exaggerated because I'm using black thread. You want to remember that you're going to use threads that match your project. On this particular one, I'm doing green thread because I liked the green in the background. So I'm doing green thread. So what I have left to do here is I have my swirls to do. And then we did not give you a background design for these spaces that have the circles because we want you to get creative. I might do some pebbles, but I might also just do some meandering. And on Chris's, what she did was she just, um, she stippled the background around the circles and it looks fantastic. So that's a place where you get to choose what you want to do. All right, you're going to do this on both sections, do this on both sections, and then you're going to trim your project to a quarter inch. So um, right here, we have this set at a half inch because it just gives you some room to play. So for example, you know, when I'm stitching off of these, I don't want all those extra threads, so I just stitch off the end. But you're going to trim this to a quarter inch from the edge, and um, after you get all your stitching done, you're going to trim it to a quarter inch, and then you're going to come back and we're going to show you in the next video how to finish this project. Hi everybody, Taya here from Quilting Delights. Thanks for joining us. We are now finished with the quilting of our critters. You can see that Chris finished her gecko table runner. She did it as a table runner, but you have the option on this project of splitting it and using it as a wall hanging too. I want to talk about, now that you've got the quilting down, great job, congratulations on getting all of your stitches done, but now I want to talk about how to finish this. So in this particular project, as other projects come along too, modern quilters especially, art quilters especially, love to face a quilt instead of bind a quilt. So we're just quickly going to talk about that. It is a fantastic way to finish your project off and it doesn't add any bulk to the outside edges and you can see it's flat and beautiful. So on our uh, website, quiltingdelights.com, we have a free download that gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to face the edge of a quilt. So this is for any project regardless of the angle, any project regardless of the angle of the corners and you can check that out. It's a free download. You just put it in your shopping cart and it will um, it will uh, email you the PDF of these finishing techniques. This particular one what we're going to do is we're going to use four, square, uh, four squares that you fold in half and press to make triangles. And we're going to use four three-inch strips that are two inches shorter than the edge that you're putting them on. So if you have a 20-inch length, you're going to cut these to 18 inches, raw edges. You can watch the video on how to do this. Um, just click the link at the end of this video and you'll see how to do it. We're going to attach the corners to the front of the quilt. Each of the corners goes on the front of the quilt. And then you're going to lay your strips down, raw edges to the outside on the triangles as well as the strips, raw edges to the outside on all four sides. Center those so that you have an inch of space on either on either of the on any of the corners. I like to pin these just so that they don't shift. Once you have sewn all the way around a quarter inch seam, don't, um, don't make it any bigger, don't make it any smaller. It needs to be a really solid quarter inch seam. Once you've done that, you're going to clip the corners, but before you clip the corners, make sure that you sew a line across the point, and I sew it twice. I go all the way to the end, and then I back tack all the way across. That's going to help add some, um, 
stability in those corners when we go to push them out. So you're going to sew all four corners. Then you're going to go to your ironing board and you're going to press the strips away. You're going to press the strips away on all four sides. And now comes the fun. So now we're going to just flip these over, push our points out, and when we're done, it's going to look just like this. Now, you're probably wondering, why do I have a wood roller? And um, the reason I like these, uh, this particular one is by Violet Craft, I think. She uses them when she does paper piecing. And I love her designs. Violet is a, a fabulous uh, quilt artist. But what I like it for is the edges of these quilts, you can imagine, has a little bit of bulk to it. So once I have these down, I just go back and I push this all the way around with this wooden uh, roller. Uh, those of you who did a lot of um, wallpaper in the 70s, um, you probably still have one of these around. This is what they used to use for the edges of wallpaper. So we're going to do this all the way around on four sides. And then you're going to come back and you're going to hand stitch this edge down. Now you have two choices. You can leave these corners, corner triangles open because now you can put a dowel in here. If you're going to use this as a wall hanging, you can just put a dowel in at the top and the bottom. It'll keep it nice and square and you can hang it on your wall. Or if you're not going to use it as a wall hanging, then just stitch those down in the process of stitching the facing down. It gives a really nice finish. You can see that on Chris's project, she's done a fantastic job. She used a really cool um, fabric from her stash for um, the backing and then uh, did some really nice matching corners on this. It's a beautiful job, a great finish. I hope you'll use it on this project as well as other projects that you have coming up. Um, so uh, we're glad that you joined us for this project. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash quilting delights and join us for the next project in the MQR series.